it's not very often that I get a chance to fish new fisheries just because of my match schedule and most of the fisheries that I really go to tend to be down south or heading certainly down into the Midlands so when I got the opportunity to head north of the border into Scotland to go and fish a fishery then I simply had to take the opportunity. Now this particular venue is just under three and a half hours away from where I live so we set off at five o'clock in the morning it was uh, a lovely sunrise and we were faced with blue skies on the way up until we got to Scotch Corner and that's where the weather started to change you know we went through quite a few rainstorms we had plenty of rainbows and as is the expectation for lots of people heading up to Scotland that you can see a big change in the weather conditions. The main reason why I was here is because I was able to spend a couple of days with Stuart and Molly. They fish this fishery quite regular, they live up here in Scotland and they just wanted to work on their feeder fishing game. Stuart had a fantastic day yesterday, he was casting right the way across from one bank to the other into a four bank corner where the wind was blowing in and he caught carp steadily all day, he had a fantastic fantastic days fishing and Molly was there to focus on silverfish, she, she ended up catching over a hundred silverfish, a mixture of eyed and skimmers on one of the lakes here and it was just fantastic to spend a couple of days with two people that were really keen on upping their game. So I decided to spend an extra day here where I could actually get in and do some fishing for myself. So I've decided to fish on one of the other lakes. There are quite a few fish moving around. It's a lovely sunny day today. So I'm really looking forward to my first experience of commercial fishing up here in Scotland. Well, the wind's dropped. It looks absolutely lovely. The sun has been out all morning. However, we've got a little bit of cloud cover. It feels absolutely ideal. We've got loads of fish out there blowing. I don't know if you can make it out on this camera. John, the fishery owner, has kindly reserved us a couple of pegs today. So uh, just gonna make a decision which one I'm gonna fish. It looks ideal. So I'm gonna get some bait mixed up and it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm gonna start across, I think. I think I'm gonna start across there and I'm gonna build up a second line where I'm expecting some bubbles and that coming up. But I know there's lots of skimmers in here, lots of bream and hell of a lot of carp as well. Well, those clouds have gone now i'm all set up what i'm going to do is i'm just going to clip up underneath that other bank there's a couple of features over there that i really like obviously shallow water over there with it being so warm that's where you'd expect some of the fish to be there is a tree over there as well giving a little bit of shade which might help as it gets hotter and hotter but i'm going to be feeding a short line as well for a little bit later on so i'm just going to get clipped up underneath that other bank i've got a nice 11 foot rod that i'm using really nice for this sort of range this range is probably around 25 meters 30 meters maximum so 11 foot rods just nice for that just going to start off with a, a small method feeder and the bait tray is super super simple well i've just checked that line clip and i'm ready to go dad sat behind me in the sun I'm going to chat with John, so he's enjoying the day. I'm just going to kick off with a, a yellow bandum, simple as that. I'm only just fishing the pellets as they are. As you know, these are flavoured flavored pellets anyway. No extra glugs or anything on there. I'm squeezing them on quite tight because these do break down quite quick. Well, expand off the feeder quite quick. I'm just going to go back to that same spot now. Twenty gram feeder just holding nice over there. I'm just going to get that line sunk. It's just good practice. Of course, I'm going to be quite flexible today, cast into different spots on that other bank. I like to have the rod across my knee, as you can see, so I'm not butt resting it today just because it's, uh, there we go, it's gone straight round. Not even going to strike, just wound into him. Keep the rod down on this one, the plate a little bit more conventionally. Right, elastic in the feeder doing its job. 
as you can see that was only out there a minute or so so they're coming straight to it try not to feed too much at the minute and so i'll get that smaller feeder on it's just virtually one mouthful for the fish that's the idea and your hook bait's right in the middle of it i'll show you the other line that i'm feeding in a minute as well which i'm priming for a little bit later on Got him. Well, what a brilliant start. Brilliant way of fishing. This is what summer fishing is all about with the method feeder. It can be quite quite exciting and quite quick as well, you know, you're not sat waiting ages for bites. Particularly if you get the right spot of where the fish want to be, especially depth-wise. Obviously they want to be there at the moment. definitely in that shallow water at the moment I haven't had to move spot yet just in that one where it's a bit of a V where it cuts back into the bank that's three casts three fish there so we've obviously started in the spot where the fish want to be or where they already are it's really getting quite hot now there aren't that many fish cruising about to be fair I expected more fish cruising but maybe it's not that sort of venue you know, there are obviously fish up in the water, but we don't want them on the surface, do we? We want them on the bottom where we can catch them, but when you've got pegs like this, where you have got shallow water, even if they are just under the surface, you can fish areas that are just under the surface. But obviously in this case, it's either under that far bank or this near bank. This is a really nice, relaxed session. The way the summer's been incredibly busy, you know, a little bit too busy for what I wanted, but it's nice to sit here in the sun, catch a few fish just as though it is summer on a nice simple method on a fantastic fishery dad's here having a chat with john sat in the sunshine my dad's actually got suntan cream on now who would have thought that in scotland <laughs> and that short line i'm just setting that up with small balls of pellets like that and i want that to hit the bottom intact i'm just underarming them to that six seven meter line i'll be able to drop my feeder onto that line in a little while once i've primed it the one thing i haven't seen i haven't seen any bubbles coming up on that line which is good so far i've been told that there are areas where it might be a little bit silty where you've got bubbles coming up and stuff <clears throat> and there aren't any bubbles coming up there so i'm hoping that means that the bottom is all right there that it's not too silty wound onto that one it obviously come towards me into that slightly deeper water. Oh, we're a skimmer, this one. Unless it's just swimming towards me. Looks like it's our first skimmer. We knew there were lots in here. Let's net him to make sure we don't want to. Just like all the other fish in this place, conditions are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely immaculate, aren't they? Put the rod on the rest and that looks like there's one on there we go look at that tied up to him he's on so again just while tightening up one's gone to it thing with that as well is when you're fishing like this you just trying to make sure that your hook bait is available straight away if they're going straight to it so you're not squeezing the pellets on too tight so that if the fish goes to the feeder as soon as it goes in you want them to be able to get to it, don't you? And that's why we always have a tub of water on the bait tray to test the pellets, test your feeder, test your rig, just to see how long it's taking for them to break down. Especially this time of year, when there's a high chance of, uh, of quick fish. Well, the great thing with this, obviously, with the method, it, it, the fish have hooked themselves, which is brilliant. I'll shed the hook out itself. A bit smaller that one.
traffic that's what i'm basically feeding on that short line and i want that to hit the bottom intact so that it actually stays in like a pile of pellets rather than spread because then when i drop my method feeder on it that's exactly what my method feeder will look like when i go on it I'm just under arming that so about six meters just there as you can imagine because i've been here for two or three days we've actually stayed in accommodation up here and we have actually stayed right here on site they have got caravans or chalets or lodges if you want to call them now you know they're a far cry from the caravans we used to stay in many many years ago when i was a kid these are absolutely first class you know they're lovely and warm they're clean and dry and quite stylish and they've been a perfect base for us to stay in for two nights they do also have pods dotted around this near 200 acre site just like the one behind me but there are some smaller pods dotted around which are ideal because you know for anglers that are going to come here and just fish throughout the day you're not really needing anything other than somewhere to lay your head and those places are ideal and they are as you'd expect a little bit cheaper to stay in than the actual lodges And this one, for example, this one even comes with its own private lake. So for this six meter line, the first thing I am gonna do is undo the drag on the reel. That's so important, as you can imagine, I'm not fishing to a, a line clip. I will leave that line clip on just in case we want to return back to that far bank line but I've undone the drag and all I'm going to be doing is just underarming exactly the same rig same feeder same bait everything onto that line that we've been feeding now for, for about an hour and a half we've caught loads and loads of fish on that long line however it is showing signs of, of slowing down you know the last probably three fish that I've caught I've had to kind of rest the swim before I've gone on it so it is slowing down but that's inevitable so as you can see, I've just loaded the feeder exactly the same, same size feeder. If there are lots of fish there, they want loads of food, I might need to step up the feeder. You know, I might go up to a, a, one of the larger ones like that sort of size if they want more feed, which is quite often the case when fish come in. Because when fish tend to come in, more often than not, or we believe it's because they're hungry, they want to feed. So it makes sense to give them more food. So I'm just gonna quietly lower this in there onto where those balls have been going in balls of pellets it's a little bit deeper there as you can imagine just make sure that drags undone that's it won't take much to sink the line there will it pop the rod down i'm going to use the butt rest as well for this because i'm at such short range a lot of the bites well takes can be violent so obviously having a front rod rest like that one is going to help keep the rod in uh, stop it going in basically because of the sides on it but this is a, an extra insurance policy which actually grips the butt of the rod um, so I can just push that in there you don't have to push it in you can just rest it in like that or you can push it in to make sure it grabs it I'll just check that clutch that drag sorry there we go and that's it I think if there are fish there we'll get signs we'll get indications skimmers could be an issue i mean that's slightly deeper water there but we've been feeding it for 90 minutes now i haven't seen any bubbles or any sort of any movement there whatsoever which i've been told is a little bit rare on here because there are one or two spots that are silty but we don't want it you know we're not bothered about indications and bubbles and things we just want the fish to be there and get nice clean bites there's still quite a few fish up up, up in the you know up in the water as you'd expect in these conditions so whether they're going to be down in that deeper, slightly deeper water, or more importantly on the on the bottom, in that depth, then I don't really know. There isn't anybody else fishing like that at the moment. So all I'm going to do is just as an insurance policy again, just in case those fish are in that really shallow water, I'm going to keep putting a ball like that, exactly like we've been doing out there at six meters in that full depth. Or I'm going to do it in the shallower water down to my left like that and then obviously with the same setup again we can drop this on there at any stage i doubt we're going to see any fish down to the left because i think it's just a little bit too deep for that if any do come into the swim but we'll have three or four drop-ins on this on the bottom in that deeper water 
And if we don't get anything, obviously we can drop onto this shallow water down to our left. There we go. That one looks like a skimmer, or is it? Oh, he's come off. Well, that looked like a skimmer bite, but then when I hooked it, it felt much bigger than a skimmer. I've been in there about two minutes. Just load that feeder up again. I have to keep adding a little bit of water to these pellets, but that's why I always have a, a tub that you're constantly working. As it dries out with the wind and the sun, even when it's kept in the shade, they will dry out a bit. So yeah, that looked like a skimmer bite, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't the way that it swam off. Is that a skimmer on? It is, we've got one. Or is it a bream? Oh well, it's not the little pesky skimmer I thought it was gonna be. It's a little bit bigger than that, but it's another species. There we go. Could have brought it in when the tip pulled around like that. I don't know if the feeder had up, it looked like it had been moved, but obviously it still resulted in a fish. But of course the fish could have been on, but they're a nice stamp, aren't they? Again, brilliant condition, aren't they? pristine so as expected looks like there's one or two skimmers there so i'll have a couple more drops on this see if we can pick up a see if we can pick up a bigger fish of some kind and then i'll keep them balls going in them little balls of pellets down down that left hand margin i didn't get anything on that last cast nothing but indications this has just gone around the gren and look at this for a fish I'm not catching any carp on this line, on this six meter line, but I was going to complain at catching those on a session like this. Look at that. Whoa, he's kicking. He's going to flick slime everywhere. Look at that. Fantastic bream, that one. There's obviously bream down there in that, down on the deck, down that shelf. I'm sure we could catch plenty more of those if we change his approach slightly, but it doesn't look like there's any carp down there on the bottom. So I'm going to have a look down the shallow margin where we know there are cop in the shallower water. And hopefully this breeze that we've got now is going to give them a bit, a bit of confidence to, to feed down this left hand margin. So if that was a bream or not, I think it, I'm not sure. This is a slow fish. Had two drops, drops in down that inside. Getting lots of small indications. Right, it is, it's a bream down the inside. The bream have taken over. Good fish though. Great weight boosters those. Fantastic. <laughs> That one looks on. Is this another bream? That's a good one if it is. They're definitely there. It's not the perfect time of day, to be fair, to be fishing this line. I wish we could stay later, but unfortunately not. It's another good bream, this one. You can really put a weight of those together, can't you, when they're coming as quick as that? Fantastic. Fantastic fish, aren't they? Brilliant. I think if we could stop on this line a little bit later, then uh, I think we would catch one or two carp. Well, I'm certain we'd catch one or two more carp, but we've caught certainly way more carp than I expected. On that long line, if we'd stayed across there, I'm sure we would have carried on catching those. It's been really interesting to feed these three different spots with the same rod, the same bait, just to see what differences in species you can get at different times of day.